Hello guys, it's Nigel here with your Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Here we are now, part 18. And I think this will be like the penultimate uh, part of this Spitfire build where we're going to get it painted. Before I do that, I need to get that little seam sorted there that we can see. Or maybe I will just leave it. Maybe it's going to be fine. I don't know, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But anyway, um, yeah, here we are back at it again. And uh, it's time to get some painting done. So... What I'll do now is I'll discuss doing the painting, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to use, how I do it and why I do it. And then I might go away and get that sorted and then come back and show you when we've done some uh, done some work. So we've got our colour call outs from Airfix. So we can see here we've got the all the camouflage pattern on here, which is correct. So if we've got this next to us, say we're going to work on this port wing. Um, and we're going to do the grey first. The paint I'm going to be using is Tamiya XF82 and XF81. Uh, and these are the two colours that they developed for the Spitfire Mark 9 in 30 seconds scale that they did. So these are perfect. Um, how close they are, I don't know. I don't care. I don't want to get into discussions about accuracy of paint colour and stuff. If you look at the Qatari Spitfire and you see the instructions and you can see in there the different colours of greens and browns they had and everything. It's all gone out the window for me, all this correct colour thing, especially in World War II. Um, and when you look at sky undersides as well, it's the same thing. So basically, if we put the, the model in the same orientation, we can get a rough idea of what we need to do. So if we're going to spray the grey first, obviously we're going to be looking at this bit here. So we can see that it comes in uh, just to the side of the uh, aileron. Then it goes up, it goes behind the roundel. And then you can see that gun port there. So it's going to come down and then it's coming across here over the halfway mark. Now, in the past, sometimes what I have done, I have actually gone in with a pencil and drawn a line where it should go. And I found that the paint, the, the pencil actually shows through the paint. Because as you know with me, I like to do my painting a little bit funny. I can see I've got a spit in the uh, top of the rudder there as well. I'll have to deal with that. Um, I like to do my painting a bit blotchy so you can see everything coming through, make it look a little bit sort of sun bleached, a bit uneven, you know, just trying to make it look a bit real, really. Um, so what I tend to do now is sort of go over the top. So I'll have this here with me and I'll spray and I'll probably come right over to the edge of the aileron, go halfway up the wing, sort of come across like that and down like this. So it's a bit too much. And then when we do the pattern, we can make sure we get it right. The one thing you don't want to do, I think you've seen me do it on, I think it was on the B-52, I can't remember now, but um, I actually managed to not get the camouflage correct. It might be on the Stuka actually, and I actually had to go over it again because I didn't go far enough. So what I'm going to do is actually, when you, when you look at this, what I'll actually do is I will spray the grey sort of out here, really. And then this grey here will come across like this. So too much grey. And then when we actually come to put the green on, we can overlap the grey and make sure we don't get any of this showing through. So what you don't want is sort of the grey bit there to sort of finish here and then the green to start over here. And you can still see this primer with the black on it. Then once we've done the grey, we're going to go over some white tack sausages. As you've seen me do before, and I'll show you how to do it again. We'll put some white tack sausages on there and... We'll basically go over and paint the camouflage so it's got a bit of a soft edge I don't want a hard edge um, I want a bit of a soft edge so um and I believe that's the way it should be in fact what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go and get my book on the Spitfire Mark 9 and we'll have a look at some close-up photos okay so this is the wonderful book from Wing Leader and this is the photo archive number 20 and it's all on the Spitfire Mark 9 it's brilliant I've done a review of this book if you want to go and take a look um, so you can see here where we've got these drawings, you can see there appears to be a pretty sharp edge. And when you look at some of the photographs like this one here, you can see there appears to be a pretty sharp edge between the uh, grey and the green. But when you look at other photos, like for instance here, you can see the edge is quite soft. OK, um, and as you go through the book, you will see different camouflage schemes. You see here, this one looks fairly hard, fairly hard edged. Um, and you can see this one here looks fairly soft edged. Uh, if 
fact, that one I just looked, in fact, yeah, you can see there it looks fairly hard edged here. But if you come back here, it's quite soft edged. So you can have a mixture. So I tend to use um, white tack sausages to get a kind of soft edge. You can see here, this is a very soft edge on there. You can see there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go for a soft edge using uh, blue tack sausages. And, um, and that way we won't get the, the hard edge. Somebody did ask me if, they, if I knew where they could get 24th scale masks for the camouflage. And I'm like, why would you want to use masks? You don't want an edge that hard. It, want, it wants to be slightly soft. So that's what I'm going to do. One other little tip I just thought of for the beginners. When you've masked your model, like you've masked your leading edges and everything, make sure right before you paint it, like literally as you're bringing the airbrush to the model, go over and just check your masking because it will peel and pull away and you can see here I've left it purposely this has been masked for about three days and you can see on there that tail plane you can see how all that masking tape is just lifted away so you need to make sure that right before you paint it push the masking tape up get it good and hard up on the edge because I do want a nice hard edge on the leading edge because I don't want it to drift under so there we go okay so um and make sure you do mask your tailplanes because when you paint under here, you'll get paint all over your tailplanes. So there we go. So I'll go and do the grey. Um, I'll just use my water airbrush like I normally do. You've seen me do this a million times. You don't need to watch me spray it. But uh, what I'll do is I'll do the grey. And then when I've done that, I'll show you the areas I've done, how far I've gone, why I've gone that far, why it's as blotchy as it is. Make sure we put our ailerons down. I'll get the leading edge of the air on. You can even pull the egg because they're not glued in yet. You can pull it back a bit. But uh, make sure we get the uh, front edge of the ailerons done as well so they don't all look daft if they're uh, if they're drooping. So I also get, need to get this repair done here and a repair on that line on the windscreen. So I'll see when I've done that. Okay, so there we go. You can see we've got all the, um, the grey down now and it's gone down nice and thin. For those of you that wonder about volume of paint and everything, I actually thin the paint about 50-50 with thinners, even 60% thinners, 40% paint. And my tiny little Iwata here, which has got this tiny little cup, I only use, I mean obviously I don't fill it right to the top, I fill it about 3-4 mil down from the top here. Um, and I only use like one and a half cups to do all that. So bear that in mind, when you're, when you're painting, don't go flooding the paint on it, it kills all the detail and it also kills all your pre-shading. Now, I don't think you can really see much of the pre-shading through on here because it seemed to kind of obliterate it. So I may have to do some post-shading. I think you can just see something going on here. But um, certainly on the wings, it seems to have kind of hidden the pre-shading. Really. We've got some shadows and that going on. So we'll see how it looks when it's weathered and camoed and that we can always add some post-shading should we want to. So what I've done here is made sure I've gone over the top. Difficult part here, of course, is the... The colour call outs, what have I done with them? They have all the um they have all the colours, all the all the the um the aerial view, the top view. In fact there's one there actually. That, no, that's a different aircraft, you see. That's not MI24, is it? No. Um and, and, and the, the stripes are on the tops of the wings, so it's a bit difficult to know what's going on. But basically, um I've sort of guessed around the camo. Be careful about using other ones because you can see here that this one here, so JEJ, is very similar, but it's not the same. So, you know, bear that in mind. They're both like an A-type camo scheme and the tail's pretty similar there. This looks pretty similar here, but certainly here it's different. You can see it's different there. And certainly on the... Um, where was it? I was looking here. It's different. You can see the grey comes back further towards the cockpit than it does on that one. So I was looking at, I, I don't actually have an image of that actual aircraft. I have an image of this one and that camouflage looks correct for that aircraft. So we can only assume that's correct. The other thing to notice, and I didn't notice it and I've, I've done it and I've corrected it. This one here, the actual camo colour finishes on the door, which seems obvious. You know, why would they bother painting part of the belly? You can see this one, it does go slightly down onto the door. So I've actually added some blue tack here, soft line, and then I can, um, I've got a nice sort of soft line there, 
and we'll, so I've left that on. You can't sort of do one bit and then take it off and then put it back on, which is a shame. You, you have to sort of do it all together. Um, so I need to do the green now with that in the same place. So I might even do that now because it's quite late. I might do that now and then just leave it and not do any more just so I can get that blue tack off because if you leave the blue tack on too long or even with the white tack you can get a bit of an oily mark left behind. It will disappear, it will rub off but um, if, at the end of the day if we have to we can always repaint that. So um, so there we go. So I'm pleased with how it's come out. As I say you can see here this is a couple of hours ago this was painted. I actually need to get some more grey paint on that leading edge don't I because I haven't gone down enough with the airbrush. I haven't gone low enough onto the edge but that's going to be chipped anyway so I guess we could be leaving like that. We may just put a bit on there just to um, maybe even just brush a bit on there. But uh, yeah it's sort of looking quite nice I think. It's, um, it's not at all bad. So I'm going to get some, I'm oh, not going to get any green on there. I'm going to do some um, some sausages and I will show you that when I start doing it so that you can uh, copy if you want to. Um, it's a it's an old, old trusted old method for getting a, a soft edge camo but there's a few little bits you must be careful of and I'll try and give you the warning. I've got my buster wing here, we can try that and show you what you can do and where, where you can go wrong. So um, I'll see you in a minute for that, it's probably going to be tomorrow now, I'm not going to do it now tonight, it's too late. It's, um, what is it now? It's one o'clock in the morning, bloody hell. So I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow for that and we'll get this um, get this camouflage all done. Okay, next day now and the grey is nice and dry so we can handle it and everything. We've got our sausages there ready. I've replaced these sausages down here because they weren't very nice with the uh, blue tack. So I've replaced them and now we can get in and I've gone round, I've just touched in the bottom of there where I've done that and I've just touched in. I replaced the masking tape on here um, because it had got dusty, it just kept peeling away so I decided to replace it and I just put some more in there I just push it up to the edge and then spray down to it. So there we are. So, um, talking about the camouflage, as you know in a few minutes ago we talked about the soft edge and the hard edge. If you want a hard edge camo you can actually lay down masking tape like so. You can lay down some masking tape on your model um, and I'm going to do this roughly. You need to do it more gently on your model if you, because you'll, you'll damage it. But basically if you want to get a hard, nice hard edge camo effect you can come in and do this sort of thing. Yeah and then you can peel away peel away the masking tape and you'll get when you spray it you'll get a hard edge camo. I'll show you now. We can just gently spray that green put a thin layer on there just to show you and there we have hard edge camo remove the masking tape hard edge okay so that's one way of doing it now that's sort of appropriate for 70 second scale and stuff maybe 48 scale but for something this big unless it had a hard edge camo which it won't have done then that is not really appropriate for something of this scale the other thing you can do is freehand so if I come along to this edge here, what you can do is just actually come in and freehand the camo. So you can go around like this and just do your freehand camo like so and then fill in. Okay, you can remove the nozzle and you'll get a tighter, you can get a tighter line but your needle's susceptible to damage. So you can come in then with your nozzle removed and you can come in like this and get a nice tight line just like so and then you could put your nozzle back on and, and do all the edging doing the filling in. Um, that's good, 70 second scale, 48 scale, maybe even 30 second scale you'll manage it but with something as big as this you can imagine trying to hold it and do that freehand is going to be a nightmare so I choose to use the sausage method because I like sausages so basically we've made a sausage here I've used white tack this is white tack rather than blue tack it has less oil in it so you want to make them all about the same diameter to get an even finish across the aircraft and I generally go about three four mil like that so what you can do then it's coming on with your sausage. The other beauty of doing this it allows you to work with your plan in front of you. It allows you to work and decide where all this stuff's going to go. And if you think, oh, it needs to go over a bit, you can pick it up and move it over a bit. All right, okay, and then just 
just give it a little push down just enough to stick it down but you don't want to push it flat you just want it to remain like that then you take some masking tape okay so we can take some masking tape here then we'll put a little piece in there just like so and then we'll put a piece like that on there and then what we can do is with our airbrush we can spray and always stay 90 degrees so always stay like this okay don't ever start going like this or like this stay 90 degrees so just come along and just do your thing 90 degrees to the to the sausage just like so always stay 90 degrees as you can see me doing there all right and then what you'll see when you remove this you will see you get a nice even soft edge camo now I'm going to show you that what not to do Jess hair in there okay so like I said you need to stay 90 degrees so if we imagine this is all nice down here we stay 90 degrees I'll mess this side up so we come along and we've stayed 90 degrees down here and we've done a lovely job and we've got a nice soft edge and then here I'm going to change the angle and come out and go like that and we'll see what happens you can see what happens you get this sort of double effect because you you're spraying underneath the radius so you can see we've got a nice soft line there but here it's all over the place because I've come in under the tape so that's why you stay 90 degrees so that my friends is basically that and that's for the newer modelers among you that wonder about how to do camouflage effects as I say I remember somebody messaged me and asked where they could get masks for the camo on this kit and um, I'm sure there's people out there that will make them because they want your money um, but in my, in my opinion, and only in my opinion, I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm wrong somewhere down the line, but I've got books that prove that I'm right, so please don't bother. Um, that is far more accurate for something particularly in this scale. Even the soft, even the freehand is going to be better than that, than, the, than this. That is not correct for this scale. So bear that in mind. So I'm going to go on now, do some sausage work on the uh, actual model, and then we'll get some camo painting done. Okay, so there we go. You can see we've got it partially done. So my idea is do the fuselage first. You can hold the wings then, and you can get it so you can hold it nice and square and everything. And then once that's dry, you can use the fuselage to hold it and do the wings to get them square. So uh, as I say, with this, um, with the um, sausages method, it is absolutely critical that you don't go, you know, acute into it you need to be at least 90 degrees or more away from it but you need to keep the angle constant so that the the sort of the soft edge stays constant there are probably little errors that we can go around and touch in freehand afterwards but um you know a bit of gray over the green or a bit of green over the gray it's, it's not an issue we'll cover all that when we get to it if we have to well i'm sure we will have to do it because it's me doing it and i'm not very good at it so right so i'm going to do some painting i'll just do a little bit on camera and then i'll get the extractor on and and show you how it looks um so if we come along here and we do this engine cover, in fact, I'm a little bit concerned I've not, I've, I've not gone far enough back here with my... This is the beauty of these sausages, I can just move that back there. There we go. So we can just come in here. This is the Tamiya XF81. It's mixed about 50-50 with the leveling thinner. As I say, just come along, do the edges first. Just staying square on, square on to the to the sausage, just like so. And do the same up here, staying square on. And as I said, there will no doubt be areas that need to be touched in. It's not an issue. OK, 
keep the paint a bit thin and blotchy just for a bit of realism so it doesn't look all even there we go and you might be looking now and thinking, oh my god, that blotchiness looks horrible. But wait till you see it. it's weathered, it's got the decals on. It really does come out nice. There we go again, staying square. We're all done. There we are, simple as that. And then once that's uh, dried off, we can unmask it. So I'm gonna go on and get some more done. The other thing we mustn't forget to do is the canopy and the rear view mirror. So I'm gonna put them then there so I don't forget them. But in, in the meantime, I'm gonna get the rest of the green done and then I'll come back when it's done. Right, so we've got some green paint down, as you can see, and it's uh, nice and blotchy, which is the effect I like. So we can start to remove some of this mass. So all these bits of tape, we, we won't throw away. We put them on the bench because when we come to mask the wings, we can use them again. It's waste not, want not, eh? So there you can see that blue text come away with the tape. Just put that down there. And there you can see we've got, as your first, the, the, the soft edged, Camo, you can see it looks really, really nice with the hair on it and everything. But it looks really nice with that nice soft edge. It's sort of a line, but it's not. You can't get a line like that with freehand, and you can't get a line like that with masking. So that's why I enjoy doing it. Um, I'm just going to put a drop more green paint in there because it's a little bit thin. I am noticing some tip dry with this. It's very strange to get tip dry with leveling thinners, but hey ho. So there we go, so that can come off. And then we can remove these bits of tape here. Obviously use all those again. That's coming away with the blue tack. <laughs> it's, you obviously got the, sorry, the white tack. The white tack is obviously sticky and then the tape is sticky. They're, they're two sticky things that are designed to stick and they stick very well to each other. So there you see. Now you don't need to watch me do all this unmasking, do you? Because it's going to bore you to tears. We'll just do one little bit more. So you can see the soft edge. And there we go. There's an example. I'm sort of, in a way, I'm glad that's happened. You can see there's an example where I've got the, the edges too thin. So I'll mask that off again with the blue tack and then I'll repaint it. Just touch it in. And it'll come out absolutely fine. So what we'll do there is we will get a... A fresh blue tack sausage and we will roll it out just like so okay and then we can could be in a worse spot for, for filming <laughs> we can just put that down there okay and we run it onto the green and then we're going to keep it on the grey where it's where it needs to be corrected. And we can run it onto the green there. Get a piece of tape just to fill in. Oh. Why is it always a nightmare to do anything when the bloody camera's on? We can see there I've, I've scratched the green paint here. And then all I need to do is come in with the airbrush and just blow in that area that's a bit too soft. I'm also going to blow in these scratches here. And then when I pull the... You can see we've now got a nice edge there again. Okay, so that's that's how we do the repairs. It's a, it's a doddle. And you've got to remember, guys, when you're doing this, it's not a showroom car. It's not a custom car. 
it's a war machine. It would have had paint applied by blokes doing one after the other. It probably would absolutely cheese off with it. And you know, it just it's just anything will do. So you got to remember that. Having said that, I'm contradicting myself because I've got my D-Day stripes perfect, whereas they wouldn't have been perfect either. But hey, it's a model. It's not um, it's not a museum piece. No one's ever going to see it, other than me. So there we go. I'm going to carry on doing some unmasking, and then I'll come back when it's all done. And there we go. As you can see, all done, and. As you can see, very, very blotchy. The camera's making it look a lot more blotchy than it really is. A couple of areas here, you can see I've got a little bit of the, the grey primer showing through there. And I think there's a little bit somewhere else as well. What was it? Oh, I can't. But it's a little bit there. I might just leave that because we're probably going to post shade it anyway. Give it a bit of a fade. So then when it gets some black varnish on it, it'll look really sort of used. Um, I'm not going to like beat the living daylights out of it but I just want to like it's been parked in the sun and in those days the paint wasn't that good and it would have like dulled very quickly so uh, when you see them brand new they're all shiny and after a few weeks well, you just gotta look at the Lancasters you know literally there's there's a picture in one of the Lancaster books and it literally is like here's a picture of it and then there's a picture of it two months later and it just looks awful <laughs> so they did get beaten to hell um so uh yeah I'm happy with that as I say, it's all unmasked. We got the top side there with the green and the grey, and on the bottom we got the the grey with the stripes. So um, there we are. So the next thing I need to do to this is probably give it a clear coat, and then we'll go around and do any sort of touch-ups or anything we want to do. Um, but I'm going to let it dry first for a few hours because with Tamiya paint it's not very tough, and you can easily scratch it just with your fingernail. But once it's had 24 hours, it's absolutely fine. But up until then, it's a little bit hard to um, hard to handle. So I'll see you back. A couple of seconds for you. Another day for me. Right, next day now, so it's nice and dry. I've gone around and done a few little touch-ups where where the paint was a bit thin. I've added some. Um, I've just tied it up in like a line there, and I tied it up this area here where it was all it was there, wasn't it? Where it was uh, thin. So done that, and now we've got this lovely blotchy sort of uneven, sort of soft edged, hard edged, whatever camo. So I'm happy with that. So it's time now to get this masking off and um, I'll grab a cocktail stick and we'll get this, uh, get this thing, see what it looks like. So we'll get this off of here and hopefully we won't lose any of the underside paint. I will actually reuse this masking. Never throw masking the tape away unless it's absolutely necessary. But at the same time as I'm doing this I'm also working on the Apache so there's obviously going to be masking to do on that. So it's handy just to have it by the side of you. Even if you only use it to hold a few parts together while you're assembling or just to use it as like a secondary mask. You know, like where I did the, uh, the edge of the, the edge of the uh, sausages, that sort of thing. So you can see we've got a nice sharp line there. We've got a nice sharp line there, which I'm not sure if this is actually correct. I think it would be the soft line in reality, but hey ho. So this is all looking good. So our stripes are looking good. And then we got the, the sky coloured band over the top. That took some masking, that took some working out that did. So I'm going to get a sharp knife under there. Just lift that and then we'll just lift that one. This is the um, do you know I've forgotten the manufacturer but it's really good masking tape. It's in here. It's so good it's pulled that paint off there, look bastard. 
Um, this one here, Saizo Curve Line Tape. It's really, really good stuff. It's got a very, very sharp edge on it. So I'm going to have to touch that in now, which is a pain in the arse. It's, you can see how good it is. You get a really, really crisp, clean edge with it because it's, it's like a vinyl rather than a kabuki tape. So you can see now we've got our sky stripe there, we've got our bands around the bottom and we've got a, a repair to do there, so that's great. Thanks for that. Just what I needed. So I'll get the rest of the masking off um, up around the front here and then I'm going to gloss coat it. And then once it's gloss coated, we can start looking at decals because as you know, we always... I shouldn't be taking that off, should I? As you know, we always... Leave that on there for now. We always um, put the decals on before the weather in, then we can weather the decals in with the paint. I've seen models, not many and not recently, but I've seen people put the decals on after the weathering, and then you've got a, a lovely weathered model and, and bright, shiny decals, which seems a bit uh, daft. There we go, there's the edges of the Lower cowl in there with the with the camouflage on it, so that's all looking good. And I'm glad I've got this nice soft, uneven, sort of dodgy looking edge, which is what I wanted, which I think is is realistic. God, that's stuck in there well, isn't it? Right, so I'm gonna call that a day for this video, and I will come back because what I've got to do now is gloss coat it. I'm going to use Aqua Gloss. So I've just managed to get a load from Hero Boy, if sold out now. So I'll use Aqua Gloss, give it a coat of gloss. Nothing, it's not going to be immaculately shiny, it's not a model car body. But it's just to give me a better base for the decals, because this is a fairly flat surface. Oh. One thing I will do actually before I go, because I know you'll want to see this. Get off! I know you'll want to see this. We'll see how... This wing striping looks again. I've used this sizo tape, so hopefully it's not going to peel it. And I haven't. I've used the uh, Tamiya tape. That's good. It's the Tamiya flexible stuff. And there we go. Get off of my hand. So you can see now the yellow band on the edge of the wing, looking lovely. Same on this side. Let's just pick it up with a knife. There's that one. There's that one. You can see as well the nice sharp demarcation between the between the leading edge of the wing. And the uh, well, the upper camouflage, sorry, and the leading edge. I'm going to leave this all here masked because obviously I don't want to get gloss gloss coat in there. There you can see now we've got all the, the different colours going on. And you can see it's all starting to come to life and look like a Spitfire rather than a, a grey plastic model. So there we are, guys. There you go. Look at it from underneath. all right in it even if I say so myself right so I'm going to call it a day for that one and I'll see you back for part 19 and we'll do the decals um, I know I've got the one man army masking set for this but remember this is an out of the box build so we're going to use the, the decals that come in the box um, and then we, we've got another kit as you know so we'll do we'll do that again on that one so I'll see you for the next part soon thanks for watching bye for now